Thank you so much, Leslie. Um, thank you for your amazing work uh, on behalf of the parks and the families that are uh, here in Springfield and who come from all around to enjoy them. Um, it, it's thrilling to be here at Geetle Park, of course, and uh, especially to celebrate the awardees for the OSLAD grant program, uh, which is, of course, intended to beautify our neighborhoods and our communities and give families and all of our residents really uh, green space, making our state an even more attractive place to live, work, and play. Uh, this wouldn't be possible without our partners in the legislature. And you had it right. Um, they do amazing work. Uh, some of them are here today. Uh, I want to recognize them. Uh, of course, our, the local state senator, uh, our friend, Senator Doris Turner. Uh, also locally here, uh, Senator Steve McClure. Uh, we've got Representative Maurice West, Representative Sonia Harper, Representative Mike Coffey. Also local, Representative Sue Scherer uh, and Representative Tara Costa Howard. Um, uh, they are just some of the many legislators who care deeply about the Oslide grant program. Uh, but these are uh, folks who want to make sure that uh, our communities are even more livable uh, as we move forward. In recent years, Springfield Park District has received $800,000 to redevelop Kiwanis Park and Isles Park, and I'm very pleased uh, to bring new investment to our capital city today. Since the OSLAD grant program was first established nearly 40 years ago, it has provided more than $471 million for park development throughout the state. Uh, that's nearly 15,000 acres of land and more than 2,150 beautification and renewal projects. The health and well-being of Illinoisans sits at the heart of the OSLAD program. And with picnic and playground facilities, sport courts, um, swimming pools, campgrounds, fishing piers, hiking trails, Illinoisans, especially those who reside in historically distressed communities will now have a new way to soak up all of the great outdoors and what it has to offer. Today, I couldn't be prouder to announce that our OSLAD program is offering the largest round of grants in the history of the program, and that's nearly $60 million just in this round. Uh, not only that, but 25.5% of these uh, awards are going to distressed communities, places that have been historically disinvested in or that have experienced catastrophic, excuse me, catastrophic events such as floods or tornadoes. That's approximately five times what distressed communities received last fiscal year, thanks to a heightened push from the DNR team to focus on places that have too often been forgotten. This means that uh, places needing renewal and restoration, like the city of Cairo, Illinois, which is a recipient of their first ever OSLAD grant, will be able to improve their parks and their green space. Also, for the first time ever, we've been able to cover 100% of the project costs for qualifying distressed recipients, up from 90% last round. Lifting up communities that need an extra helping hand has been a priority for my administration, and we are delivering on that potential all across our state. This year, I'm particularly proud that our Department of Natural Resources teamed up with the Northern Illinois University Institute for the Study of the Environment, Sustainability, and Energy, hiring 15 undergraduate and graduate NIU students to participate in the grant review program. This innovative partnership didn't just streamline the grant process for the IDNR team. It provided the next generation of Illinois leaders the opportunity to shape our state's future. From the Havana Park District, the Chicago Heights Park District, the Pleasure Driveway Park District of Peoria, to the village of New Milford, the village of Montrose, and the city of Pinckneyville, 118 communities will receive grants to expand and revitalize and build new parks from the ground up. That means more centralized outdoor spaces for families, friends, and neighbors to gather. 
and all while creating good-paying jobs and safeguarding our environment. The OSLAD grant program is a prime example of an intergovernmental holistic approach to wellness, sustainability, and community investment, and I couldn't be more excited to see the projects that will come to life thanks to this latest round of funding. And with that, it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, DNR's acting director, Natalie Finney. <laughs> Appreciate you. Uh, happy to take any questions from members of the media. Uh, first of all, I, I, uh, I watched, uh, very interested to see how it would come out. It was very close, as you know, and uh, no candidate got 50% of the vote or even all that close to 50%. Um, primaries are messy, and they don't usually uh, illustrate the candidate's positions on the issues all that well. Um, and so I think it will be important for uh, the candidates that made it through that primary process and now in the runoff to articulate their positions and the contrast between their uh, views um, and honestly the voters of, of Chicago just like the voters of the rest of the state when they vote uh, deserve no less than uh, understanding where the candidates really fit uh, and uh, it allows the voters to make decisions about where they will end up. I'm a Chicago voter, uh, so I'm going to be listening intently to what they have to say, and I look forward to watching and, and listening to uh, the campaign play out. Do you need more information before you endorse, or are you... Yeah, I'll be listening and watching again. I think they have to articulate um, more than just, you know, in a messy primary with nine candidates. It's, a, it's, a, it's frankly a, a, a cacophony, I think, for, for most people. Um, and so I do think they're going to have to articulate and, you know, direct their message. What is their primary message? And it's going to be, you know, focused on what are they going to do about education? What are they going to do about health care? Uh, what are they going to do about public safety? What are they going to do about creating jobs? Uh, those are all important things that I don't think have been, uh, f you know, fully fleshed out by either one of those candidates. Again, I'm going to, you know, I'm interested to watch and listen and, you know, see how it all plays out. <laughs> As you know, it's a private endeavor when you go into the voting booth. So, why is it important for your operation, your administration, who the mayor of Chicago is? Oh well, my goodness. Um, first of all, uh, it's important to the people of Chicago who the mayor of Chicago is. Uh, just as a voter, I'll say that's important to me. But as governor, it's very important. Chicago is an important part of our state. It's an economic engine of the state. Uh, awful large population uh, in Chicago that, that are constituents of mine just as they are of the new mayor. And I think very importantly, and this is something that I hope you'll keep in mind, uh, you know, as you ask questions, as you no doubt do, uh, about endorsements, um, look, the governor and the mayor of the city of Chicago have to be able to work together. Um, we saw four years, I think, under uh, Rahm Emanuel and Bruce Rauner where they didn't. And that wasn't good for the state or for the city of Chicago. And so I think uh, I keep that in mind every day when I you know, think about what I, what I say, what I do, uh, who I endorse. You know, how is that relationship uh, uh, affected by the things that I do? And I hope they'll keep that in mind as well. Where do you think Mayor Lightfoot went wrong? Oh, I, uh, you know, <laughs> there's lots of po post-mortem, I'm sure, to come. I, I would just say uh, it is hard to hold a position like the mayor of Chicago, uh, and it was four hard years, no doubt about it, and she put in great public service. Um, anybody that's willing to sacrifice like that, I think I, I want to congratulate on their willingness to do so. Have you spoken to her or either of the winning candidates since the election last night? I have not. Last night, the governor, COVID-19 pandemic is coming up. signed into law. Should they go ahead and uh, comply with that law? Well, they're, they're Any law in the book should be complied with, obviously, and I'll look into that to, to uh, learn more. Thank you so much.
like you, everyone, that three years close to the, to the pandemic, uh, any regrets you may have, especially considering recently Dr. Fauci uh, said that the vaccines may not have been effective as they were sold to be with new variants. Do you have any uh, regrets? You know, uh, it's funny, you, you, it's easy to look back and say, you know, if I knew then what I know now, would I have done something differently? I'm sure that's true about almost anything that we might talk about, that any of us would look back and say, is there something different I might have done if I knew then what I know now? So, uh, you know, there are all kinds of things like that. I've, I've uh, been asked this question before. I think about it. Um, I think it was all a tr- kind of a traumatic period for everybody, right? The worst parts of the pandemic. Um, and I, I, you know, what are the ways in which we could have alleviated uh, the suffering of people? Um, one that I often think about is, could we have had a mask mandate earlier? Should we have? Would, ha- would that have saved more lives? Uh, as it is, we saved an awful lot of lives, I think, with the, the uh, restrictions that were in place. And, and people followed them, importantly. Uh, but if you look at uh, the comparison, for example, between how we did versus how the state of Florida did, where they really had no requirements, no mandates, um, thousands and thousands uh, more people would have died uh, in Illinois if we had followed the lead of a state like Florida. If they had followed our lead, thousands fewer people would have died in Florida. So just as one example, uh, I, 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 I'm sure there are things I would have done differently, but, but here we are. I think we're all learning, you know, uh, uh, years into it now, um, more of the science, which we couldn't have known early on. And we've learned that the, the vaccines work. The vaccines work. Let's be clear. We're, many of us are able to gather indoors uh, now because so many people are vaccinated and the vaccines worked. Thank you.